Hi there, grade 10. Our next topic will be the remainder theorem and followed by the factor theorem. What is the remainder theorem? So this is basically working on the remainder whenever we divide a polynomial function by another polynomial function without going through the, the, the long division method or synthetic division. So this is the idea of the remainder theorem. But before we define what really is this remainder theorem, let's work on exercise number one. So we're going to divide 2x cubed minus 5x squared plus 6x minus 3 by x minus 2. Since the divisor x minus, minus 2 class is linear, so we can make use of the synthetic division. So by just working on the coefficients of the dividend, so we have 2 negative 5, 6, negative 3, and then the root we know is 2. So we will perform synthetic division, so we'll bring down 2, and then 2 will be multiplied to the root 2, so we have 4, and everything here will be added. So we have negative 5 plus 4, we have negative 1 times the root 2 again, which is negative 2. Plus 6, so we have 4 times 2, we have 8, and then plus negative 3, we have 5. So in synthetic division, you learn that the last value is the remainder. So the remainder here is 5. Now, this time, let us evaluate P of 2. Now, evaluating P of 2 or P of X is done by substituting the value of C, which is 2 here, to all the X of this polynomial function. So, we have 2 quantity uh, 2 cubed minus 5 quantity 2 squared plus 6 times 2 minus 3. So, using your calculator, P of 2 is equal to so you double check using your calculator so p of 2 is 5 Compare the result here from the result in the synthetic division. We got the same value, 5. So what's the relationship between this remainder in the synthetic division and with this P of C, which is P of 2 here equals 5. Now, the remainder theorem states that if the polynomial function defined by P of X is divided by X minus C, where C is a real number, then... The resulting remainder is equal to P of C. So you don't need to undergo again the long division nor synthetic division. What you will just do if you are just asked to work on the remainder, whenever you divide a polynomial function by another polynomial function, you will just apply the remainder theorem. So by simply evaluating P of C, you will be able to calculate for the remainder. Let's work on more exercises on remainder theorem. Here. Okay. So use the remainder theorem to find the value of f of 3 in f of x. And we have to check by substitution. Okay. So... Here, we are asked to work on the remainder theorem, and that is simply substituting this 3 to all the values of x here. So, f of 3 goes like you substitute 3 to x, so you have 3 cubed here, minus 2, quantity 3 squared, minus 4, quantity 3, plus 5. So, you work on your calculator also. You evaluate f of 3. Let's see what will be the result. It's 2. 
So, when you divide f of x by x minus 3, you'll come up with a remainder 2. And we will be able to verify if that's really correct by doing the synthetic division. So we have 1, negative 2, negative 4, 5, and then we have 3 here. So we'll bring down 1 times 3. So this is, everything here is addition. So negative 2 plus 3 is 1 times 3 is 3 plus negative 4 is negative 1 times 3, negative 3 plus 5 is 2. So the remainder is 2, really, no? Okay, number 3, use the remainder theorem to find the remainder when f of x here is divided by x minus 2. So we'll no longer use of the synthetic division. Instead, we will just evaluate f of 2. So we have 5, quantity 2 cubed, minus 14, quantity 2, or times 2, plus 3. So use your calculator. What is 5 times 2 cubed, minus 14, times 2, plus 3. It's 15. So therefore, the remainder class is 15. So this is the idea of the remainder theorem. How about factor theorem? The factor theorem is a consequence of the remainder theorem that enables us to determine whether a specific equation of the form x minus c is a factor of a given polynomial. So the factor theorem class is defined as if p of x is a polynomial function and c is a real number, then x minus c is a factor of p of x if and only if p of c equals 0. Now, as you can see in the remainder theorem, we have made use of x minus c. This time, we're going to make use of the root c to... So basically, the purpose of the idea of factor theorem is to find out if x minus c is a factor of a polynomial function defined by p of x. And the answer would be true or correct if we evaluate p of c equals 0. Okay? So in number 1 here, show that x minus 4 is a factor of 2x cubed minus 6x squared minus 5x minus 12. So we just have to find out if p of 4 is 0. If so, then x minus 4 is a factor of this p of x. So that's for us to find out. So how do we do that? We will evaluate p of 4. So basically, it's again substituting for to all the x here. So we have 2 quantity 4 cubed minus 6 quantity 4 squared minus 5 times 4 minus 12. Okay, so let's work on our calculator. Cube minus 6 quantity 4 squared minus 5 times 4 minus 12. So it's 0. So this is correct. So we can say class that x minus 4 is a factor of this. The reason why um, if p of c equals 0, we consider x minus c as a factor of p of x. Why? Because um, C 
if p of c equals 0, then c is the root. The root is the other term for the 0. So when you say c is the 0 of the polynomial function, we can say that c is the root of the polynomial function. That's why p of c equals 0. Okay? Now, again, from the factor theorem, if p of c equals 0, then we can say that x minus c here is a factor of p of x. That's it. Okay, number 2. Determine whether x plus 1 is a factor of this function. So, we have to prove that p of negative 1 must be 0. If this is true, then x plus 1 is a factor. Okay? So, p of negative 1 is 5 quantity negative 1 to the 4th plus quantity negative 1 cubed minus 4 quantity negative 1 squared minus 6 quantity negative 1 minus 10. So this is 5 minus 1 minus 4 plus 6 minus 10. So this is negative 5, 0. And then this is equal to negative 4. Let's verify using our calculator. 5 times quantity negative 1 to the 4th plus quantity negative 1 cubed minus 4 quantity negative 1 squared um, yes minus 6 quantity negative 1 and finally minus 10 it's really negative 4 so since since p of negative 1 is not equal to 0 then x plus 1 class is not a factor of p of x which is defined here by this okay and thus Find the value of k such that 2x minus 1 is a factor of 8kx cubed minus 4kx squared minus 6kx plus 2. Okay? So is it a factor? But there's k here, so we have to work on the value of k. So how do we work on the value of k? So let's work on the root of this one. So 2x minus 1 equals... 0, we have 2x equals 1, so we have x equals 1 half. So, we have to prove here that p of 1 half, p of 1 half equals 0. If so, then, um, or rather, Two x minus one is a factor of this function. Then p of one half must be equal to zero. Now we can solve for p of one half and equate that to zero. So we have. P of 1 half equals 8k times 1 half cube minus 4k times 1 half squared minus 6k times 1 half plus 2. And this is equal to 0. Okay? So, we have here 8 
And then that's what is one half quantity cube times one over eight K minus four. What is one half quantity squared? So this is one fourth times K. And then we have one half times negative six minus three K here plus two equals zero. So there is one variable left, simplifying the expression. So this is 1k. So we have k here. This is also negative k. And then we have minus 3k here plus 2 equals 0. So transposing the constant term on the other side of the equation, and this is 0, right? So we have negative 3k equals negative 2. So divide both sides by negative 3. K is equal to 2 thirds. Okay. Let's verify again. So here, we have 8K, then 1 half quantity cube minus 4K, 1 half quantity squared minus 6K times quantity 1 half plus 2. And then this is 1 half quantity cube is 1 8 times 8. So this is correct. Then 4 times quantity 1 fourth K minus. So this is 3K plus 2. So we have K minus K here minus 3K here plus 2. So we got negative 3K equals negative 2, correct? Divide both sides by negative 3. So therefore, really, k equals 2 turn. So that's how we work on the remainder theorem and the uh, factor theorem. Now, again, as, um, so as you can see, this, this is how the remainder and the factor theorem work. So I hope you're able to understand the discussion because your next activities that I will upload in the MS Teams have something to do with this topic. Okay, so we're done now. Goodbye, grade 10.